I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the foundation. So subscriptions bring a lot of different possibilities, um, but this is just one thing that, that the Divi blockchain has. And I propose we move forward to why, why Divi is a good alternative today. How does it compare to others? Um, what makes it great? Yeah, I think we, we should do this. This is, this is exciting. Like, I mean, the first and foremost, obvious one is that there's no it doesn't take me much to run a node yeah right like just to compare to other ones that i know of that i personally spent time looking at like eos was one ethereum is another Polkadot was another um if you want to run if you yourself want to run your own node on these networks you the equipment you need just i mean it's not like a bitcoin miner it's not that bad but uh, you know, there's another example of high cost equipment required to run a node um, or a miner in that case. When we started, I was using a Raspberry Pi. Definitely gotten bigger. It's not the first tier VPS you, you, you can use to run it. Maybe you need the second tier, but it's super lightweight. Really, it's low cost yeah. to run these both on equipment uh, and operating costs. Um, so just that alone. Now, there are other chains that, that qualify in the same way in, in those respects, but this is makes it way more inclusive, way easier for anybody to just do it. Most people already have a computer. They can just run it on there. Um, that's, the, that's one of the huge benefits of, of, a Divi, uh, of the Divi blockchain versus other ones that are out there. There's other things too. I mean, That's right. But just to remain on the lightweight and efficient part for a second, um, one of the things that you can see if you – if you want to run an Ethereum node, for example, one of the big thing is the storage. Those blockchains are bloated with tons of smart contracts, a ton of things. And while this could have been a possibility on the DV blockchain, it was decided from the very initial time that it wasn't the right direction for the DV blockchain. Yes. We wanted, and especially random string again, wanted, um, the staking and being able to run a node and verify their the transactions, submit your own transactions to be available Everyone, to yeah. everybody. You don't have to spend a thousand plus dollar to like you have to run an Ethereum node. And to give you some context on the DVLab side, um, basically the infrastructure for the mobile wallet it is reliant on uh, external nodes, right? It is a light wallet and it needs to be able to communicate with external nodes to be able to update the blockchain data, submit its transactions and all that. And so to be able to operate, of course, it, it wouldn't be realistic for DV Labs to run an Ethereum node, a BTC node, and then a Litecoin node. All those things would be a huge, huge cost. And so instead, we have to basically look into companies like Infura and BlockCypher. So they are blockchain data providers. They run dozens of nodes and, and they basically provide the data. For DV, we don't need that. We just connect to one DV node. Of course, it has a redundancy to make sure that it never goes down. But one DV node, it never gets locked. It can handle all the connections, all the requests that we have. And that DV node runs on a very small server. Um, if you compare that to, again, Ethereum and all that, that needs um, 32 core, 120 gigabyte of RAM, more than a terabyte of storage. I mean, th those are really just not by normal people. It, it's, it's, yeah, same with Solana, same with yeah. uh, Polkadot. I mean, those those are massive machines. It requires ma when it requires massive machines too. It it removes the individual, and then those individuals have to then partner. Or again, you get into that conversation about delegation. Now you're taking your funds, you're partnering with some company, some group, some organization, maybe on chain, maybe it's a friend. You're now having to give your coins over to someone else where you can pull those funds together to create these nodes. It 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 doesn't make sense. This goes away from Satoshi's original vision. With the validator vaults that 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 we have today, yes, you need to have at least a couple of divi in there to make them work. I mean, to make them really start competing. That's not really that's not really the point. You need to have a good amount to be able to have a reasonable level of participation. 
and a reasonable level of expectation that you're going to mine a block within a reasonable amount of time. I mean, those are numbers you come up with. But the fact is, is it's easy to set up. It doesn't require a brand new server with 32 cores and whatever you said, Neegs, however many, I think it's many terabytes on some of them, depending upon the kind of nodes you have. You, you don't have to do that. It can be run on a reasonable device, reasonable cores, reasonably, obviously set up safely and securely, something anybody can buy. Anybody can get a machine like this. Anybody can participate and deploy nodes like this. It costs sometimes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for some of these other types of nodes. And um, whether you have a vault on desktop, a vault on mobile, or you do the vault yourself, the, 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 the cost for participation, if you're going to do some service that's offered to you, that's an optional crypto made easy service or whatever service you participate in, um, it's not expensive. It's not crazy. It's not cost prohibitive. So let's um, talk about those votes. So yeah. we talked a little bit about the technical aspect in the previous section, but let's talk about why those votes are important. Why are they different compared to the rest of the industry? So I'll start by the masternode. Before DV had masternodes and random string, I actually discovered that those masternodes were creating some issues on the blockchain. Nothing that was highly critical, but it was still impacting the stability of the blockchain. And more than anything, it was blocking improvement on the blockchain. The side chains couldn't have been connected to DV properly with those master nodes without risking some instability that, that could have been repercuted on the side chain, which of course wasn't desirable. So those staking votes are, it is really the best, um, the best implementation of Cold staking without any intermediary. So the user, when they deploy a staking votes, the staking votes is a copy of themselves. No one has the control over the staker that is remotely deployed. And that staker is basically your clone and it is staking for you in that hosted environment exactly. that nobody has access to. So it is without any intermediary and it is basically the closest you can have from the initial vision that Satoshi had, where people would be able to secure their own transaction, they would be able to take part in their own network, and basically those staking votes allow that. And what we have seen with the masternode is that for something like almost five years, we had the masternodes and the staking option on Divi. And while the staking was definitely earning more for almost all the time, uh, we could see that most people were on masternodes. Why? Because masternodes were a lot easier. They were a lot easier yeah. to, to operate. They were a lot easier to deploy. For staking, you had to manage your, your desktop wallet. You had to make sure it was always running. It was always connected to the network, always updated. The masternode, you just deployed it and you could forget it. Staking vote offered the exact same comfort. They offer the exact same stability. And they even improve that ease of access because they're not limited by a tier. You can add and remove funds anytime you want. So it is really the easiest way for anyone to take part in any blockchain system. I agree with all of that. One thing that always crosses my mind is why isn't everybody doing this? Why don't we have you know 50,000 staking vaults? People seem to be happy with staking Ethereum weirdly or staking with, you know, delegation on Polkadot and Cosmos. And I think the thing is not just with random strings kind of outlook on improving the blockchain, providing this technology for staking vaults. I think the real issue is that people haven't been burned enough yet. Maybe they're using methods that have points of centralization that are both controllable by outside. Mm. I mean, they're, they're delegated and their funds are safe. Don't get me wrong. It's not a custodial system like say Celsius or whatever. It's, you know, those are viable methods. Their decentralization is important simply because the blockchains are safer when they're more decentralized, safer from control, safer from censorship, safer from the original group of devs attacking in one way or another. There's a thousand scenarios you can come up with as to why you want a more decentralized blockchain um, 
and you want full sovereignty of your funds. Uh, and I think just people aren't there yet. And I think we're going to see it going forward, right? As, as crypt, crypto and Bitcoin become more and more part of our entire economy, I don't think even normies doubt that anymore for the most part. They may not like it yeah. <laughs> for one reason or another. But I think as we start seeing more and more people wanting to get into their Solana and get into their hot coin of the day, I think eventually we're going to see where it hurts. And like Solana is a great example, actually, because, okay, you delegate your stuff there. Something bad happens and the whole chain somehow goes down for a couple of hours. Like that concept is so bizarre to me. There's no way I would rely as a business, I would rely on that particular chain knowing that it goes down that's for sure you know somebody presses the stop button like it's insanity to me that doesn't happen to all the time and i think if random string was here i think it would add if you want to make sure that you are looking at proper data you are sending your transaction properly then you need to have your own node yeah. it is the only way you make sure that the information you have is reliable and no one is getting in between you and the network that's by running a full node. Yeah. And having a full node that is running on any computer is a major benefit compared to requiring ASICs like on Bitcoin, requiring big rig of GPUs to be able to, to secure formerly Ethereum, but you still have a lot like that. Yeah. Um, you just need a normal computer with DVD. Yeah, never, never mind the fact that you can't you can't have a node if you have got thirty one point nine Ethereum. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, that's another huge barrier. <laughs> that's true. Um, but yeah, now so so I, I think we just we haven't come to the place yet where the full sovereignty of your node, your funds, your control, uh, or your assurance that what you want to do with this, with the coins, uh, happens. I think we just haven't gotten to that place and we will. And the most protected blockchains will be those that have technologies like this, where you are in full control. I agree. And so we're kind of at the beginning of that. And we just haven't really been able to shine and show that doing it this way is the right way. Everything else is kind of like flash and shine to me. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. And I think you will always have that concept where the technology has to move forward, right? And so yeah. this is what you can see with DeFi and all the utility that has been found in the last cycle. It's basically that people want to use that blockchain technology. They want to build things and they don't want to be slowed down by some of the concepts uh, that are actually critical to the initial idea of blockchain. And again, it is actually a very important thing. We see that the industry is flourishing in those areas. And then you will have the actual trustless version, the actual sovereign version that will follow up. Those technology cannot go as fast as the innovation is coming. So the innovation will have to do some trade-offs on those critical things. But then as you wait and as project kind of go on those new innovation and, and try to find the trustless way, try to find a decentralized approach, that you will see that you will see those things rise.